Hey guys, it's Snowflake, and welcome to the second part of my event video. I really hope you enjoy, and if you haven't seen part one, please check it out. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this video. I like to call the minor event that happens in the beginning of 2009, the summer of 2009, the summer solstice event. There is a special iridescent quest before the solstice about saving the sunflowers. Sweet Pea even paid a surprise visit in the Summer Glade. When the solstice began and the sunflowers were saved, Iridesa showed up at some public parties. Camp Pixie Dust is Pixie Hollow's longest event, with it lasting the whole summer. It began in 2010, and it was from the solstice to late August, and it returned in 2012 and 2013, lasting from the solstice until early September. This event brings the mainland summer camp fun to Pixie Hollow. You'd earn a sign-up badge in Havendish Square, and many of the areas in Havendish, as well as Snowcap Glade, would be decorated. The bar would be a pool with an interactive beach ball and interactive fountains in 2010, and there would be a barm gift in 2010 and 2013. The theater had a campfire where Lyria would perform campfire stories, and that was Pixie Hollow's first theater performance. There was a performance scheduled in 2010, but was at the top of every hour in other years. In 2010, you could act out stories written by contest winners when there's no performance. Also that year, for the last week of camp, the campfire was replaced with a stage, and there's a ceremony famous fairy visit every day that week. There are five troops, one for each talent. Uniforms were sold at Cassie's, although the shirt was the most important every year. The uniforms got a different look in 2013. Every year you can make s'mores, which is the first ever event craft, and there is also a s'mores emote, which is the first ever holiday emote. In 2012 and 2013, a fireworks silly suite was added to Dulcie's. In 2010, a new camp badge was added every week, and you could earn all the badges any time during camp. Badges can include crafting special crafts, doing the interactive camp activities, decorating your home with a tent, playing the new butterfly painter game, and seeing Lyria. In addition to s'mores, 2010 had a canteen and boat craft, and they even added interactive camp activities. Most of them stayed after camp ended. Two camp-themed quests, one by Tink and one by Fawn, were added. This year is also the only time the ribbon emotes were used. Camp returned in 2012, and it was divided into six two-week sections. The first was the beginning of camp, and the other sections were themed to celebrate each talent. In each section, there is a quest and visit from that famous fairy, a special craft for the talent, and a certain meadow that was decorated for that talent. You'd use the emote for that talent to earn the spirit badge and get a special silly suite. There is also a badge you can earn for playing a certain game, and you get a trophy for getting on the leaderboard of that game. 2013's camp include the same troop silly suites you could get the same way, as well as the same crafts. They can each be obtained throughout the entire summer. There are also hidden troop hideouts where gem bunches can be found. Similar to 2012, this year's camp was divided into six sections, only this time each were based off a Pixie Hollow activity, such as wilderness exploring, gardening, and crafting. And each section had a badge that could be earned by doing that activity, and the talent with the most participants that earned that badge would win this week's camp challenge. Because the camp's theme this year was about the Never Unicorn, Lyria told a story about it, and each section had a different famous fairy request about the unicorn, and there was even a unicorn amount. A moat, I mean. However, 2013's camp was a really sad one because it was right before Pixie Hollow's closure. Famous fairies that visited during Camp Pixie Dust were the Fab Five with a surprise visit from Vidya in 2012, the Never Council, and the Pixie Pals were known as camp counselors. Several events like Great Game Day, the Summer Splash Party, and the end of summer sparkler overlaps with Camp Pixie Dust. Sports camp was held in the summer of 2011 and it lasted from July to early September. It was a training camp for the Pixie Hollow Games and there are uniforms on sale for the different talents. It introduced Marina's Place 
in which you do a sign-up quest which involves playing the minister games. The camp was divided into five two-week sections, each focused on a different talent. Each section had a marina quest in which you'd earn a tr trophy, a banner to collect in the ballroom, and talent game badges to earn e there is also a lap pool and an interactive smoothie stand in the barroom. The theater was also a campfire. In Tinker, Water, and Garden Weeks, which are the second, third, and fourth weeks, Lyria would tell a part of a three-part story about the garden talent losing street with one part in each section, and she told the entire story at once at the last section of camp. Famous fairies that visit during this event are the Fab Five, and the Pixie Pals, who are known as coaches. The Summer Splash Party and End of Summer Sparkler overlaps with that event. The Summer Splash Party is a beach party event that occurred in August from 2009 to 2013. From 2010 to 2013, it overlapped with camp, usually during the Water Talent theme weeks. Palm Tree Cove was decorated, and from 2009 to 2011, there was a special Silver Mist quest. In 2009, the quest was before the event. The quest in the later years was a Camp Pixie Dust quest. There is always a hidden lucky fish in some water area in Pixie Hollow, and you'd earn a badge if you find it. In 2013, the lucky fish showed up in the beginning of Camp Pixie Dust, because it doesn't want to wait till a summer splash party. Famous fairies that visited during this event include Silver Mist, Iridessa, Tink wearing Rosetta's dress, and the camp counselors. The most depressing event in Pixie Hollow's history is the Pixie Hollow Farewell Event. It occurred between August, the August 20th announcement of Pixie Hollow's closure and the September 19th closure. It was the last month of Pixie Hollow and it overlapped with the end of Camp Pixie S 2013 and the end of Summer Sparkler that year. Everyone had a free membership, and the shops were filled with a bunch of items from Pixie Hollow's past. Event locations were open to all with free giveaways, and the barn was open to everyone with a farewell badge. Each Never Council member shared their favorite Pixie Hollow memory in the Never News, but this event is what some consider to be the Dark Age of Pixie Hollow, as it was all miserable as our favorite game was about to be closed closing. I'm so glad Fairy ABC is open now. The end of Summer Sparkler occurred from 2009 to 2013 in early September, and it was during the farewell event in 2013, and it's to celebrate a super fun summer because it's time to focus on autumn. Acorn Summit and Springtime Orchard are decorated with these beautiful lanterns, which are some of my personal favorite event decorations. The event merged with camp from 2011 onward, and it's unfortunately Pixie Hollow's last event and the 2013 Sparkler, as I said, mainly focused on Pixie Hollow's closure. In 2009, there's a special badge to earn from playing Fairy Fireworks, and there's an Iridesa quest in 2009 to 2010. It was the camp quest in later years. In 2009, the quest was before the event started, and there's a free gift in Springtime Orchard in 2009. Iridesa also visited during that event most years. The changing of the leaves is all about preparing for autumn, and it repeated the least number of times out of most of the events. It was from 2009 to 2012, right before the new season. Each meadow in the autumn forest had a different leaf preparation station, and the stations became interactive in 2011. In 2009, a leaf painting machine in Cotton Puff Field was covered up before it was eventually revealed. There is always a quest, which is usually a Tink quest, but it was a Fawn quest in 2010. There are two Tink quests in 2009, and there is a Ballroom gift in 2012. Famous fairies that visit during this event include Tink and the Minister of Autumn. The Changing of the Leaves had the first ever Minister visit. The Autumn Equinox was at the beginning of fall after the Changing of the Leaves, and it was usually a minor event. In 2009, there are some banners in the autumn forest, and there are even some treats in the pumpkin patch. The 2010 equinox corresponded with a welcome home party. 2011 had banners in the autumn forest, an open barroom, and having to square decor. 
while 2012 had a barm gift and a golden acorn hunt in the autumn forest. This event is when the Minister of Autumn visits. The Welcome Home Party was held in Fall 2010, and it was basically when an Autumn Equinox event would have been. The event is to celebrate the release of the Great Fairy Rescue movie and Tink and Vidya returning home from the mainland. The event introduced Vidya's daily spin, and Acorn Summit and Kanpa Field were even decorated to welcome Tink and Vidya. And there's even the boat from the movie in Cotton Puff Field. Tink had a quest where the reward was a key to Lizzie's fairy house with all sorts of collectible home decorations. And it was the first ever special event location in Pixie Hollow. Having to square in the bar room were decorated with drawings Lizzie made. And there's even a collectible drawing in the bar room. Famous fairies that visited during this event were Tink, Vidya, and the Minister of Autumn. The Moon Festival is a Fairy ABC exclusive event and it has occurred from September to early October in 2016 and 2017. In 2016, there is a special event meadow. In 2017, there are interactive lanterns in Rose Island, a famous fairy visit, and a badge for attending that visit. The event is based on the Chinese legend of the moon and moon cake. Pixie Hollow's anniversary is in early October, and it was the anniversary of when the beta ended back in 2008. In 2010, a party hat was given to members for the second anniversary, and the Never Council made a surprise visit to have in Dish Ware. In 2013, party hats were sold at the Pixie Post Office for the fourth anniversary. Now keep in mind that this year, this fall, we're going to celebrate the 10th anniversary. The Berry Harvest Festival is Pixie Hollow's first ever event, and it was held in early October 2008 and hasn't returned since, even though it was said to be a non tradition. This event is all about gathering berries, and you'd earn a badge for gathering 10 berries. And everyone that logged on also got free shoes. Tinkerbell's Arrival Day Party was said to be Pixie Hollow's first big event, and it was held in late October 2008 around the release of the first Tinkerbell movie. Berries are asked to find a secret party location at Pixie Hollow, which ended up being the new Meadow Kanpa Field. Berries could earn a badge, get a free hammer decoration, and maybe save Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell's visit during this event was the first ever famous fairy visit in Pixie Hollow. The Animal Masquerade is the Pixie Hollow equivalent of Halloween, and it was held in October from 2008 to 2012, and it was the first Pixie Hollow event that ended up becoming a tradition. Animal costumes were sold in the shops, and new costumes were added every year, as well as the return of classic costumes. But many people made their own costumes and got creative. And this event is also to honor the animals. 2008's Masquerade introduced Acorn Summit and Stemma Style, in 2008 and 2009, there's a free pair of chipmunk ears in Acorn Summit and a badge for wearing an animal mask or ears during the event. 2010's masquerade was different as it featured most of Pixie Hall's meadows decorated in gore lanterns and trick-or-treating for free items, which returned in 2011 and 2012. 2012's trick-or-treat required a pumpkin basket from Cassie's. The event had the most meadows decorated out of all the events. The newer masquerades also have a bar gift and pet feeding stations. 2012's bar gift was actually a new candy corn silly sweet. Also, also from 2011 to 2012, there is a fawn quest. In 2010, there are actually five fawn quests that occurred before the event. Starting in 2011, there is a special pumpkin cookie at Dulcie's. Nvidia gave special gifts like wads cat ears, and witch's hats in Vidya's daily spin. In 2012, there's a spoopy decorated Lizzie's dollhouse in the theater. Famous fairies that visited during this event include Fawn, Kit, Tink, and the Pixie Pals who are known as the Animal Buddies, Tricksters, and Treaters. In Fairy ABC, the old decorations returned and stayed for a while. There are even special event meadows, and in 2017, there's an interactive pumpkin decorate feature. The Minister of Autumn even visited in 2016. The Autumn Revelry lasted from late October to early November 2009. 
at around the release of Tinkerbell the Lost Treasure. Before the event, there is a Tink quest, Rosetta quest, and Iridesa quest about preparing for the revelry. The Autumn Meadows were prepared for Blue Pixie Dust, and Tink's balloon was teasing Kanpa Field before eventually revealing itself. When the balloon was revealed, players could collect a free toy balloon. Eventually, Blue Pixie Dust covered the Autumn Forest and you earn a badge for helping harvest the dust. Tinkerbell visited while wearing her adventure outfit, and this revelry takes place at the same time as the Tinkerbell Lost Treasure, according to Tink's quest. The decorations return to Fairy ABC in Fall 2016. The sister celebration was held in November 2012 during the release of Seeker of the Wings. Before the event, there is a Tinkerbell quest. Once complete, you could earn a badge to enter the Frost Forest, which had magical surprises, Spike Sweet Shop with wing color changing silly sweets, and you can also pick up a ballroom gift, which you'd wear and use with others with a special fairy wing emote to earn a badge. Also in the barroom, there's an interactive snowmaker. The event also introduced a new home. Tink and Periwinkle also visited during this event with Vidya paying a surprise visit. The Autumn Jubilee occurred in November 2008 and it's said to be the biggest event in autumn and is the Pixie Hollow equivalent of Thanksgiving. The event is all about harvesting and fairies are encouraged to donate ingredients and they'd earn a badge for doing so. The cornucopia in the pumpkin patch would fill up as people donated. There was even a special honors badge for the top Harvest Hustle scorers. There was also a free gift in Maple Tree Hill. There was also a poem which Famous Fairy would visit during this event and Tinkerbell won. Along with Tink, Tabby visited for the first time. The Fairy Feast is a fall event that's the Pixie All equivalent of Thanksgiving, and it replaced the Autumn Jubilee and lasted from 2009 to 2012. There is a pumpkin patch cornucopia from the Jubilee every year, and it gradually filled up in 2009. Also in 2009, there is a long table full of food in Acorn Summit. Every year, there is a quest, and the quest was before the event in 2010. It was a fawn quest in 2009 and 2010, and it was an iridescent mystery quest in other years. Starting in 2010, you could earn a badge for making soup in Acorn Summit and decorating a cake in Kanpa Field. Also starting that year, there was a pumpkin cake in Dul Dulcies and even a pumpkin cake emote. Starting in 2011, there was a delicious ballroom gift and interactive cake tables in the Autumn Forest. In 2010, there was a badge for hosting a party game. And in 2012, there was a kitchen in the theater. Famous fairies that visited during this event include Fawn, Sweet Pea, and the Pixie Pals who are known as chefs. Decorations were also used in Fairy ABC in 2017. The cake was even interactive. The Pixie Owl Games event was held in late November 2011 at the around the time the games were aired. First, there is a marina quest. Once complete, you get to visit the construction zone of the new Fairy Coliseum Meadow and get a free gift there. The theater became a cheer zone and some of the meadows had banners cheering on a certain talent. After the games aired, the Fairy Coliseum officially opened, theater had a slideshow of highlights from the games, and there was a badge for being one of the original racers of Animal Derby, and there are also special items in Vidya's Daily Spin. Famous fairies that visited during this event were Rosetta, Chloe, and the Pixie Pals who are known as the Coaches. This event is the first and only time Chloe visited. The Great Winter Light-Up was held right before the Winter Solstice, and it's about decorating the winter woods with lights so the winter fairies could work in the dark. In 2008, it was about lighting fireflies and encouraged fairies to play Firefly Light-Up. Iridesa paid a surprise visit to Springtime Orchard. Starting in 2009, the winter woods were decorated with beautiful lights. The music was muted as the winter fairies were heard working. In 2009 and 2010, you'd earn a badge by playing fairy fireworks. Starting in 2010, there would be a silver mist quest where the reward would be a key to the ice palace. In 2012, there was a special ballroom gift. Famous fairies that visit during this event include Iridessa, Silver Mist, and the Pixie Pals were known as Snowflakes or Snow Fairies. The Great Winter Light-Up 
had Iridesa's first ever visit. And last but not least, it's time to talk about my favorite way to end the year, the Winter Wonderland Party. This event celebrates the beginning of winter and the holidays. The Winter Woods are decorated in the beautiful lanterns from the Winter Light Up. And in 2008, there's the Silver Mist Quest, which is the first ever event quest. And there are 12 free quests from all the famous fairies from 2009, based on the 12 Days of Christmas song. There's even a Christmas tree in Kanpa Field that year. And I think there are holiday snowflakes in 2009 or 2010 or something. Yeah, I think it was 2009. Starting in 2010, the Ice Palace, also known as Winter Hall and Fairy ABC, opens. And you need a key badge from Silver Mist Quest to access it. You can collect ice sculptures in the palace and play the magic piano. In 2011, you can use your Grow Talent skill to grow holly on the railings. And there's a Christmas tree that magically decorates itself in 2012. In 2008, the event badge was free to collect in Snowcap Glade. In 2011 and 2012, the badges were collaborative badges used in the Ice Palace with the Snowflake or Snow Weasel emotes. The Snowflake emote was used every year since 2010. Every year since 2009, there's a special ballroom gift, and there's a snowball fight after 2010 in a badge for tossing snowballs. Also starting in 2010, there began to, sn it to be snow in Havendish Square. In 2011-2012, you can light up the lanterns of the, that the adorable snow animals were holding. In 2011, there's even a station where you make a holiday gift for a friend. The festive party returns in Fairy ABC with the festive barn decorations and famous fairy holiday parties in 2016 and 2017. In 2017, there is a ballroom design contest in a new Christmas meadow. Famous fairies that visited during this event include Silver Mist, the Minister of Winter, and the Snowflake slash Snow Fairies. Well, thank you so much for watching this video, and I'd like you to check out my first video with the earlier events, like the spring events, if you haven't already, so I hope you learned something from, from this video, and please tell me what your favorite Pixie Hollow event was in the comments. Fly with you later!